Okay, we have a fantastic speaker coming up, moving right along. Our next speaker, Representative Bobby Scott, Congressman Robert C. Scott. Uh, he's going to be talking next. He is serving his 12th term in Congress. His legislative successes include laws that increase the minimum wage. He helped create the Governor's Employment and Training Council, which improved health care benefits for women, infants, and children. He is the first African-American elected to Congress from Virginia since Reconstruction, and only the second African-American elected to con Congress in Virginia's history. He is a member of the St. Augustine's Episcopal Church. His very first car was a light blue Dodge Dart which is just wonderful, and the first music he bought, he's not sure, but probably some jazz. Please, let's make him feel welcome. Welcome, Representative Bobby Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George, for your very kind introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Now, it's fitting that we're right under the gaze of Abraham Lincoln to honor the same union and diversity in this country that he dedicated himself to maintain as one. As Episcopalian, I can attest to the power of working with people of many faiths and secularists who understand that when we use reason, critical thinking, and empathy, we know that America is at our best even in the face of adversity and inhumanity. Religious liberty is a fundamental American value, but it's complicated. Religious organizations and secularists alike have been at the forefront of challenging slavery, challenging poverty, and, and, and violations of civil rights, but we can't gloss over the fact that religion has also been used to justify slavery. Jim Crow laws, unequal pay between men and women, the, unf the unfair firing of unmarried pregnant women, even today, the denial of services to LGBT citizens. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was enacted to end the sorry history of bigotry in this nation. The law made it illegal to discriminate in employment based on race, gender, nationality, or religion. But the Civil Rights Act made an important exception. It said that churches and religious organizations can discriminate in their hiring, but only when the organization is using its own money. But a particular peculiar thing happened under the Bush administration, still going on today, and that is a so-called faith-based initiative that started to allow religious organizations to claim a so-called right to discriminate in hiring based on a religion, religion, even with taxpayer dollars. If they're using, if they're, say, for example, administering a federal program, there is simply no justification for taxpayers to fund organizations who tell an applicant, we don't hire your kind because of your religion or because you're an atheist. We don't need that kind of discrimination. Now that violates the principles of the First Amendment, basic understanding that if an organization is going to accept federal funds, then they ought to prohibit discrimination in employment with the federal funds. Now we have to recognize that when the government allows discrimination based on religion, it also invites discrimination based on a person's religious views on race, national origin, gender, gender or sexual orientation, put simply. If you can discriminate based on religion, it has a domino effect on the rights of other groups, including other religious groups. And if we allow discrimination in federal programs, we lose our moral authority to tell a private employer who he can hire and who he can't fire. In, in 1993, uh, Congress tried to protect minority religious groups by passing the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFRA. Under RIFRA, Congress said, if government is going to take any action that might affect religious practices, then it must have a compelling interest to do it and use the least restrictive means to achieve that goal. But just a few years after the passage of RIFRA, we started to see the law being used not as a shield, but as a sword to undermine fair housing, employment discrimination, and public accommodation laws. For example, in 2013, the Supreme Court's Hobby Lobby decision declared that RIFRA can allow a for-profit corporation to use its corporate religious beliefs, whatever that means, 
to deny federal employees, the female employees, birth control coverage under their health care plans. So let me say emphatically, we should be free to believe or not, but we should not allow sincerely held religious beliefs to, of one person to cause harm to another person by lying discrimination. After all, fighting discrimination is a compelling state interest too. Now, that's why I worked with Congressman Joe Kennedy of Massachusetts to introduce the Do No Harm Act. The Do No Harm Act protects, protects religious liberty, but it also maintains protections against discrimination. Simply, it simply ensures that RIFRA and religious beliefs cannot be used to evade laws designed to protect people, like laws prohibiting discrimination, requiring equal pay, providing access to health care, and protecting children's welfare. Simply put, we should do no harm. So what can you do? Call on your representatives in Congress and tell them to support the Do No Harm Act. We must stand up and take notice when so-called religious liberty or religious freedom or faith-based initiatives are used to weaken established civil rights laws. So I ask you to use your voices for reason and to hold your elected officials accountable to uphold civil rights laws that prohibit discrimination. Together, we, make, we have to make clear that, governor, that government should never fund discrimination. No one should be disqualified from a taxpayer-funded job because of religious discrimination. And we should not allow a law designed to, prohibit, to protect minorities to be, to be used to inflict harm. Now, we are here today because we believe that reason mandates a justice guide our public policy, not fear or irrationality and speak out and remember that Martin Luther King once said that in the end, we will, not re we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We are united to promote reason and compassion to help us achieve the goal found in the preamble of the Constitution, that is for people of the United States to come together in order to form a more perfect union. Your presence here helps us get closer to that goal. Thank you very much. Representative Bobby Scott, that's right. Thank you for wearing a suit, sir. It takes a certain courage to wear a suit in June on the mall.